All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. We've got a new series for you. It's gonna be called Coaching the Dynasty. Now, the Dynasty is our group of guys that are involved with the creation of the YouTube videos. You know, Jesse is going to be our guy for the day, but we also have Lance, we got Kyle, and anybody else who ends up joining the team moving forward. It's gonna be broad, inclusive, and hopefully productive for everybody so we can start bringing our scores up and be more competitive out on the tournament circuit. Jesse's been wanting to get better for a long time now. He hasn't had dedicated time to do so, so this video is dedicated to improving him and and uh, his skills, hopefully taking his bowling to the next level. Jesse's got a couple of things that make him him. And let me finish. That's good. <laughs> and that is the case with everybody. Everybody has something that makes them who they are and you can't ever completely remove it. And sometimes what makes somebody them is not conducive to them scoring as high as possible. Like me, I have early timing. For a long time, I was at the top of my swing on my third step in a five step approach and that's where you wanna be on your fourth step. So over the course of time, I've worked on that and it's I'm pushing against it, fighting against it. It's something that I'm always gonna have to work on. Whenever I start to really struggle on the lanes and I'm not throwing it the way I want to, I always go back to the thing that makes me, me, and the thing that prevents me from doing the things that I wanna do, which is that early timing and being on, on that step at the top of my swing. So that's what I pay attention to. That's what we're gonna highlight for Jesse here in this video. And we're gonna find multiple ways to attack this because your body's very smart and it's always going to figure out ways to get around what you're working on. So you always have to trick it. Let's hop into this lesson and figure out what makes Jesse, Jesse. All right, so we actually worked on some things last week. I can't imagine he had a lot of time to actually work on these things, but I'm sure they're in the back of his head. It's my first time bowling since then. He's got a tournament this weekend bowling with some of our buddies, so I'm not gonna go too heavy on the mechanical things because you wanna have two different mindsets. You wanna have a practice mindset, which is gonna be more mechanical. You're thinking about changing things behind the foul line. And then you wanna have the mentality when you go into tournaments of scoring and doing whatever you can to bowl the best you can. That's gonna be beyond the foul line. You don't wanna think about anything before the foul line when you're competing. Maybe one or two swing thoughts, but you wanna limit it to that keep it simple, go through your process, and then perform. So the biggest thing with Jesse is, one, his hand position. He's trying to get more under it, underneath it, and behind it. And as a two-hander, usually that's pretty automatic. Uh, in his case, it's not. It, the approach to it hurts him from getting there easy. And the highlighted spot, the thing that makes Jesse Jesse is Thomas Keiko. Oh my god. <laughs> if I had to pick one bowler that Jesse kind of bowls like, it's Thomas Keiko. And I wouldn't use him as an example to as somebody that you want to throw it like. Um, that's just kind of how it matches up. So through his approach, he kind of has a little push, but then he picks it up. And when he picks it up, that's using a lot of upper body. And you want to use as little upper body as possible. You want to have as free a swing as possible. It, wants, it needs to be like a pendulum. That way the hand can get underneath the bowling ball nice and easy, and then you just let it go. When there's too much effort up top, especially at the end of the approach, your hand can get in spots that you don't want it to get it in. And uh, that's what we're gonna work on with Jess. We never wanna look at where the problem is. So right now, we wanna focus on his release and improving that, getting his hand underneath it more and more on the inside. We gotta take some steps back because if we can fix, if we can find the source of the problem, we have to attack that. Otherwise, we're just putting band-aids on the problem and eventually, when you finally find the source, you're gonna have to undo all those band-aids and then work your way back and then whatever you figured out, it's almost like you're just throwing it all away. Now, let's throw some shots. I'm actually gonna watch this time. All right, so we highlighted that Jesse's thing is him picking up the ball instead of and having that or over the bar round swing. I don't really remember everything that we worked on last week, oh, but I, you. okay, he does remember. I know the first thing was the first two steps. So we wanted to shorten the first two steps to give him more room to slide into the line, which is gonna make his flat spot longer. So he's gonna be able to stay under the ball a little easier. So we're gonna start there. We're gonna give it maybe three shots, really focus and over-exaggerate the size of those steps, make them as small as you can. We want the first one to be the smallest one, the second one just marginally larger. As you can see, his hand kind of gets to the side of it pretty quick. I don't think Jesse has enough time to really get his hand in the right spot and allow him to stay on the inside of the ball. So as he's going through his approach, he's getting to the top really quick, he's picking it up, and then he's pulling it back down, and that's when his hand is getting around it, because it's not dropping into the slot naturally.
This is gonna be tricky for, for some because when you when you change steps, it kind of changes your timing. And I think that's kind of throwing Jesse's timing off a little bit. Uh, we wanna to try to get to the end of our push away on our second step in a five step approach. These two steps, your bowling sided foot should be stepping at the same time as the push. So that time it looked like the step got down and then he got to his push and that kind of threw his timing off. That's him looking very uncomfortable at the line. So on this one, actually just focus on the first two steps, one more shot and then we'll go to the, the push. That was a little more in sync. Definitely better. I'm gonna be careful what I say around Jesse because he's automatically gonna pick it up and then try to do it. So on this one, I'm just gonna have you do what you already did. Just try to keep these two in sync. Your second step and your push. They should basically drop at the same time. So as the step is getting flat footed, your push is dropping. I think the, the push was actually a little later this time. So we got a lot of room to work with right now, a lot of range. Um, the good thing about him doing those three completely different things, there was one where he pushed before the step and then that one he pushed after the step, is that he should feel comfortable enough to find that in between. A lot of times people will be too uncomfortable to get on the other side of it or over exaggerate it. And that makes it tough to get to where you want to be faster. That was pretty good. Release-wise, maybe not his best. There is one drill that I had Jesse do a long time ago. It was probably two years ago now. I call it the Doherty drill because you don't use your other hand. You just kind of throw it like Doherty. When you throw it like that, it forces you to keep your hand underneath the ball. I think that's Jesse's biggest drill because he doesn't have the left arm to help pick it up. So it's going to force him to round out his swing more and keep his hand underneath the ball. Probably not, but it's okay, because we're only focusing on behind the foul line stuff, and that's really something that we want to get down, and uh, if you want to get better, you got to focus on the things that matter. And when you're practicing, how many pins you knock down does not matter. Uh, if you really have trouble with that and you have the ability to clean the deck off and don't have any pins, in, feel free to do that. I know at Team USA Camp we do that sometimes, we don't put the pins up when we're just working on physical things. Let's show them the Doherty drill. So this is kind of a tedious thing. It's not really fun, but I think it's valuable to Jesse's game because it'll help him get a feel for where his hand needs to be at the bottom because he doesn't have his left hand to, to help the hand get into compromising position. Yeah, so he's just got a house ball here, 12 pounds. Uh, you can even go lighter than that. The point is to really just get that feeling, keep your hand behind it. And obviously if you're dropping the ball, then your hand's not underneath it. I think the autopilot took over a little too much there. It looked like the left hand was still there. But yeah, when you're doing this drill, try your best not to use your other hand. Oh, I kind of pushed it back, but I let go of it. Like, oh, okay. Try to do it without. Just drop yeah, it. just drop it. You just gotta keep your hand under it. That's all you gotta do. You can go for a lighter one if you need. But it's that left hand that's enabling him to pick it up like that. So with that being something we wanna work on, we're trying to remove the thing that's causing him to pick it up, which is the left hand. So this is probably something he's gonna wanna do maybe 10 times every time he bowls. I would even recommend it at the tournament. If you don't feel great about where your hand's at and you're really trying to get that feel, I know a lot of people might look at him funny, but you do what you gotta do to make that dope. Definitely in practice that week. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, in league, you're probably gonna have a pretty good idea of where to play, so if you just wanna work on that and get that feel before you actually start, it wouldn't be a bad idea. As you can see, his hand is it's forced to stay underneath it more, the ball roll, it's kind of hard to tell because it's a dark bowling ball, but the revolutions are much more forward. Wow. There we go, it was a pretty good one. Hand was nice and up the back of it, nice and forward. All right, let's throw a normal shot with your regular ball. We'll see if his hand position changes at all. If it doesn't, then maybe we just go back to doing the drill a little more and then we revisit. That was a little more forward. The strike is a bonus, but... Is that still I didn't really see it, but it, the ball roll was more forward than before. So one of the biggest, two of the biggest things we already uh, covered, hand position with Jesse, trying to stay under it more, uh, balance as well. I think the balance stems from him not being underneath it, trying to help it, and when you try to help it, you tend to get around it more, and it throws you off balance because you're using your upper body to create power instead of using your legs. So I always look at the legs first with everybody. Typically, the more you can use your legs to get into the line to create a stronger foundation, the more you're gonna be able to do to manipulate the bowling ball, get your hand in the right places, or at least in the spots that you wanna get it to. Yeah, a big thing with the two-handers is you don't wanna to try to create more power because 
you're automatically creating power by getting your hand underneath the bowling ball and just letting it roll off your hand. So doing more is actually doing more harm to you than good. So you really just want to get into the correct positions. The swing is like a spring. If you were to compress the spring and then release it, that's basically what the bowling swing is. On the way back, you want to be nice and straight. On the way down is when you're starting to compress the swing, you're getting your hand nice and under it, getting your elbow tucked really close to your side. And when you get to the bottom, you're just releasing that spring. So you got all that power wound up. All you have to do is let it go. Okay, we gotta try to do that. Okay, compress. It's kind of like a golf swing. Compress the ball. That was wherever I was higher. But it's always gonna be a battle. You know, your habits are gonna be very strong until you start to break them and they'll give way. And it's tough because Jesse doesn't have the opportunity to practice too often, so it's, it's harder to break those habits if you don't have the reps. How about we just try to post this one? It's a mental thing sometimes. You know, if we're not really thinking about it, we'll just step off the shot. It used to be a thing where we had to post 10 shots before we could finish practice when we were young, bowling with our dad. That's good. Again, when you post your shot at the line, it makes it easier to execute. A strong foundation to build off of. Once you got that strong foundation, then you can do things to manipulate at the bottom. It's always easier to throw a bowling ball or any kind of ball when you're on balance and off. Imagine shooting free throws while someone's pushing you off balance every time or throwing a baseball when someone's pushing you off balance every time. It gets a little difficult. It's the same thing with bowling. I think you can. The toughest part for Jesse right now is he's found a way to hook it more, but he kind of did that thing where he put a band-aid on the problem instead of finding the source. And we really didn't know where the source was until we actually worked through it last week. But now that he's trying to go about it doing more, doing it more fundamentally, he's kind of losing rev rate because that's the way he learned how to do it or figured out how to do it. That's pretty good. It's almost like he's going backwards. It's that deal where you're going backwards to take steps forward, kind of undoing some of the habits to create new ones that are hopefully beneficial to you. I tell this to everybody I work with, what you're feeling is probably gonna be 10% of reality. Like what you feel up there, it's not changing as much physically. So if you feel like you're making a change and you feel like you did what you needed to do, it's probably about 10%. You need to make it feel like a thousand percent for it to probably be exactly where you want it. You know, a good example is if you push to the right, you know, and a lot of people do to get their swing out of the way of their body, which should be the opposite. They should be getting out of the way of their swing so the swing can swing straight. If you're feeling like you're pushing it dead straight, you might be pushing it maybe here instead of here. That difference, it's not as much as it feels. So you're really gonna have to over-exaggerate it if you want it to get to a spot where you want it to faster. Also really important to video yourself very frequently if you wanna to try to improve so you can see it. Make that mind-body connection. Nice. So that's about five or six shots now that he's posted pretty good. Sometimes it really is just a mental thing. Sometimes we get so caught up in trying to hook it more, trying to throw it harder, that we lose sight of the things that are important, which balance is one of them. You can't really do a whole lot else if your balance isn't very good. Did you try to throw that one faster? It looked faster. So we've worked on the first two steps and getting those smaller to give him more room to explode into the line. We've also worked on that Doherty drill. Shout out Tom Doherty, Mr. 100. Keeping his hand nice and under it. That's a great drill for those of you that are struggling with keeping your hand underneath the bowling ball. And then just really thinking about balance. Balance is one of the most important things in the game. Now you stepped off of that one, but you're not going to post them all because if it's something that you struggle with, you're going to make mistakes. And that's what I'm going to leave them with. I don't like to give more than two or three things at a time. I think the best thing that you could probably think about move going into the tournament is the balance thing. You know, just get up there, think, all right, we're going to post this one, and that's going to help you make a better shot on map. Bang, 10 back. And I know we don't like to think about results, but we always got in on a good one. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. If any of these tips helped you, let us know in the comment section below. If you guys see anything in Jesse's game that you want to try to help him with, let us know. Also, because I know we have a lot of uh, very open and willing people to share their knowledge in the comment section, so let us know. And make sure you hit that subscribe button because it helps us do more for you. And it also, we just like to see that number be really big because it's cool. And we want to get that gold plaque as soon as possible. One million to the moon!